I am Professor Rick Martinez, and today we are going to be making empanadas con rajas y crema. And as an additional bonus, I'm going to be showing you what is masa, where to get it, what kind of varieties exist, and why it is so important to Mexican culture and cuisine. Today on Sweet Heat. I grew up in Austin, Texas, and I loved empanadas, but all of the empanadas that I knew of in Texas were made with uh, uh, wheat flour, and they were all sweet. Camote, calabaza, piña, really, really delicious, amazing empanadas, but they were all sweet. Once I started traveling around Mexico, I discovered that there's an entire world of empanadas that I was never exposed to. And so that's what I want to do today. I'm going to show you the corn empanada, which are very, very common, especially in the southern part of Mexico. And one of my favorite methods of preparation is to actually fry them. So you get this really, really crisp exterior, but the interior is almost pudding-like. It's got a really intense, delicious corn flavor. And they're obviously made with fresh corn masa, which I adore. The fillings are super versatile. You can stuff them with anything you want, but one of the things that I love that just makes me feel so good are rajas con crema. So let's get started making the masa. What is masa? Glad you asked. Masa is actually processed Mexican corn. It's different. It's a different variety of corn than what is commonly found in the United States. This particular corn is a lot harder. It's larger and it's more starchy. It has less sugar. And so in order to process it and turn it into a dough, there is a process called nixtamalization. And what that basically is, is you boil the corn with water and gal or calcium oxide. It makes an alkaline solution. It starts to break down the corn. It releases all the nutrients so they're available when you eat it. It also makes it hold its shape. So when you grind it up, it doesn't just flake apart like cornmeal. When you add water, it emulsifies and holds itself together and makes this beautiful soft dough. This is the, the Cadillac of masa. If you can find this, which it's actually pretty easy. A lot of times in most major uh, cities in the Uni United States, there's a significant uh, Latino or Hispanic population and there are places that are making fresh corn tortillas. If you just go in and ask for a pound, a couple of pounds of masa, they will be happy to sell it to you. It's pretty inexpensive. It's usually only a few dollars for a pound of masa. But if you can't find this or in a pinch, you can find masa harina, which is this. Masa harina is basically fresh masa that's been dried and pulverized. So it's the exact same process. These are, are flattened out into thin sheets, they're dehydrated, and then they're put through a grinder to turn it into flour. And then all you do here is just add water, reconstitute it, and you get basically the exact same dough. So these are very, very common in pretty much every grocery store in the United States. And so I'm putting some warm water into the masa. All right, so this is a little Rick's secret tip. It is absolutely not done in Mexico. You never ever add salt to your masa, but I'm gonna do it because I love the flavor of masa and salt just intensifies flavor and I want to taste this delicious masa. So I'm adding it. I'm putting about a quarter teaspoon in here, but feel free to do whatever you want. Masa is really the foundation of Mexican cuisine. Were it not for corn and masa and the, uh, the nixtamalization process, the Aztec empire, the pyramids, a lot of what we think of as significant cultural achievements in, in Mexican culture and civilization wouldn't exist because corn provided so much of the nutrients that allowed these civilizations to thrive. So you can see the dough is actually pretty sticky and kind of wet. And this is exactly what you're looking for because we're gonna let this rest for about 30 minutes and all of that corn is gonna hydrate and absorb some of that moisture. And then when we actually start to form the tortillas for the empanadas, it's going to be a lot firmer and a lot less sticky. And while the masa rests, I'm going to cover it with a damp towel. And now we're ready to work on the rajas con crema. Sebas, come on back here. We're gonna char some poblanos. All right, so first thing we're gonna do 
I'm going to put two burners on high and I'm gonna char two at a time. So just put these down and you also want to turn your hood on or open a window if you have it because it will get a little bit smoky in here. So you wanna char your poblanos until they're blackened on all sides, usually about four to six minutes per side. They're gonna be patches of green and that's totally fine. You don't wanna take them so far that they get really, really soft. So you want them to be firm enough to hold their shape. And then once they're ready, you put them in a bowl. They're gonna be really hot and steaming cover them with plastic and let them sit for about 20 minutes. That'll help loosen up the skin. And in 20 minutes, you'll be able to peel all the skin right off. So now that I'm completely color coordinated, it is time to clean and cut the rajas. So um, I'm wearing gloves because occasionally uh, you'll find a really hot poblano and you can see how easily the skin just comes right off. We are going to take as much of the skin off as we can and then we are going to slice them into strips. I love rajas con crema. And it's such a comforting dish to me. And it's not something that I ate growing up, but when I was in Durango, I went to this restaurant and before the entrees came, they put in front a couple of bowls of different salsas and condiments. And one of them was rajas con crema. And you know, I put it on a tostada and it was mind blowingly delicious. All right, these guys are ready to open up. I'm just going to remove the stem and the seeds. The pairing of, of a sweet cream with the roasted poblanos is just so rich and delicious. Now that everything is nice and clean, we're just going to cut them into thin strips about a quarter of an inch thick. And rajas literally means charred pepper cut into strips. It can be any type of a pepper that you like. You could make rajas de jalapeno, de bell pepper, whatever you like. Um, it, you could actually even use a jar of roasted red peppers and skip this step. That would be, actually be delicious. And if you're not really into rajas con crema or if you have maybe a leftover rotisserie chicken or some roasted vegetables in the fridge. You can pretty much fill these empanadas with anything that you like. That was a quarter of an onion and I'm using one, although gigantic garlic clove, but that's fine because I love garlic. I'm sauteing the onions and garlic in two tablespoons of butter. I've also put in the salt. To me, it's very important whenever you're sauteing vegetables to add your salt. So there's one and a half teaspoons or six grams of salt in here. That's gonna draw out the moisture of the vegetables. It's going to help them cook and bring out some of those really sweet sugars and they'll start to caramelize in this delicious butter. We're gonna saute this until the onions are just tender about six to eight minutes on medium high heat. All right, so my onions are turning a little bit golden brown. So that is my cue that it's time to add the rajas. So we're gonna throw these in there. And I've got some milk. And delicious crema. Oh, look at that. So this is gonna simmer for about 10 minutes until it gets really nice and thick. And so remember, if you like this recipe, if you like me, if you wanna see more, make sure you hit like and subscribe and you will be notified when there's another Sweet Heat episode. This looks really thick and creamy and they are done. So we're gonna turn that off and let these cool down. The masa has been resting for about 30 minutes and the rajas are completely done and cooling off. So we are going to start forming the dough. But before we do that, I'm going to give you another Rick's tip. Okay, so plastic. When you 
form corn tortillas, you need to have some kind of plastic to either line your tortilla press, or if you're using um, a skillet, you need to put something under that. So I'm using just a normal Ziploc freezer bag and a normal grocery store vegetable bag. If you use the larger or the thicker piece on the bottom and the thinner piece on top, it will make your life easier and will easily peel off the tortilla. All right, so now we are going to divide up the masa. So I'm gonna break this up into roughly ping pong sized balls. Um, with this amount of dough, you will probably get about 10 equal pieces, which will weigh about 50 grams per ball. And you know what? Josh, I wanna know if you've been paying attention. So I need you to tell me what is the name of the ancient Mexican process used to make corn into masa. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Time's running out, Josh. Hurry up. Uh, nixtamalization? Good job! Right answer! Yes! All right, and while we wait, we're just going to cover them with a damp towel to make sure that they do not dry out. All right, now we're going to get our oil heated up. So I wanna fill the oil about halfway up the sides of the skillet. I'm using a cast iron because I love cast iron and I think they're great for this particular preparation. While we're waiting for the oil to come up to 400 degrees, we are going to start working on the tortillas. And I have before me this beautiful sassy pink tortilla press. But don't worry, if you don't have a sassy pink tortilla press or any tortilla press, you don't need one. All you really need to do is if you have something flat that you can put pressure on to push the tortilla down, you're in good shape. So never fear. But because I have sassy, we're gonna use it. Okay, so I have the thicker piece of plastic on the bottom and I am going to take one of my little balls of masa, put it in the center, and put my other piece of plastic on top, and then just give it a firm press. And that's all there is to it. And so by using the thinner piece on top, it easily comes off. And now we have a really good base with the thick plastic on the bottom to help us form the empanada. So one thing that I personally have to be a little careful with is I, if you watch the show at all, you know that I love to overstuff things. <laughs> this is one instance where I really don't want to overstuff the empanada because the filling will come out in the oil. So I'm gonna put about three tablespoons of the filling in the center. I wanna keep it away from the edges. So you want um, a good half an inch around the entire tortilla. Um, and see here, I am trying to overfill it. So I'm gonna stop. <laughs> and then you want to put the tortilla in the palm of your hand and using the plastic to help you, just press it over. And then just seal the edges using the plastic. To me, this is the easiest way to do it. You can, you can take it out of the plastic and do it with your hands, but to me, this is just so much easier. And then just pinch the edges until they're fully sealed. And then once it's sealed, you can transfer it to your hand. Just finish pinching, make sure everything is sealed tightly. And I love all these little craggly bits because once they fry up, they're gonna be really, really crispy. And that is your empanada. So this particular technique will work with just about any filling, meat, uh, non-meat, uh, you can put cheese here, you can put vegetables. The only thing that you really wanna remember is that you don't want something that's like super, super wet. Perfect, oil is at 400 degrees. That is exactly what we want. And so now I am going to start with one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay it down this way so that the oil splashes that way. So if anything happens, the oil is gonna go away from me and not towards me. So just carefully drop it in. 
All right, and you can see it's super hot, but that's what we want. Um, you really need the 400 degrees to get that deep golden brown that you want for that toasted corn flavor. Everything uh, on the inside is cooked, so we really don't need to do anything to the filling other than just like heat it up slightly. It's really about cooking the masa at this point. It'll take about three to four minutes per side, and then once it's golden brown and delicious, we will pull it out. All right, that is looking really good. And so we're just gonna put this on a paper towel lined sheet tray to absorb some of the excess oil, and then we will start working on the rest. I'm so hungry, but lucky for me, there is a tray full of beautiful empanadas. I think I'm gonna go in first with a little pico de gallo, the little drizzle of crema, queso fresco. That is a really beautiful plate of empanadas. Mm, 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 mm. One of the things that I absolutely love about this as a filling, it's so unexpected. Like, you know, of all the different types of empanada fillings I've had, you don't really expect that there's gonna be this really kind of sweet and spicy cream with the rajas. I hope you enjoyed Masa 101. And for the recipe, you can find that on Food 52. And of course, if you like me, if you like this recipe and you wanna see more, make sure you hit like and subscribe and you will be notified when there's another Sweet Heat episode, which happens to be molletes. It will be an open-faced, delicious Mexican torta. Class dismissed.